Thank you, Eckert, uh, and welcome everyone to the meeting. Uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 virus, all of our meetings will continue on Zoom. And even after the virus, our meetings will continue on Zoom, although they might be in the library. But uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, uh, also welcome everybody uh, from all over the world. We have user groups from uh, all over the globe with us uh, today. And we're thrilled that you joined us and you're welcome at all of our meetings uh, through the end of June. Uh, we even have some folks from Australia and I think it's about two or three a.m. in the morning. So I hope we keep you awake. Uh, the next, I, we're all set for Shita. She has a great meeting plan. Uh, the topic is tame your inbox. It's all yours, Chita. Thank you. Thank you, George. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, what I would like to discuss today is how to tame your inbox. And if you are anyone anywhere like me, you have quite a few emails coming into you every day, and it can get a little bit overwhelming. So what I would like to discuss is rules, filters, and smart mailboxes. But I have a question for you first. Is this your inbox? And I hope you're laughing and saying yes. So is this how you feel about your inbox? Frustrated? A bit overwhelmed? So how do you tame your inbox? How do you get from a large number to this and start feeling this way? You can use filters, rules, and smart mailboxes to tame your email. So with that, we're going to go into two, two sections of your in mail, your inbox. We're going to cover iCloud.com and we're going to take a look at the mail app. So let me and we're this. going to look let at me your iOS device here. iOS on your and iPhone let me go and to iPad OS. And the first thing I want to say is that here. when you go to mail and on actually, iOS, you know what? There's actually Excuse sort me. of no way did something to create wrong. Let me back up a, second. a rule in your mail app. And actually so neither we're going to on iPad OS. iCloud.com you have and to mail. do. You have to use iCloud.com. And when you open up iCloud.com on your iOS device, this is the thing you'll see. You see the image of the iPhone. You have access to the Photos app, the Notes app, and the Find My iPhone app on your iPhone if you go to iCloud.com. There's no way to get to rules uh, or get to your email, actually. If you are on I iPad OS, you see that you have access to mail, contacts, calendar, photos, and other apps. So you can create rules on your iPad you cannot create rules on your iPhone. All right, so now let me exit. And I've already opened up my iPad to my iCloud.com account. And we're gonna take a look and go directly into the mail app. And it's just the way it is. You're going to see stuff that you probably wouldn't see otherwise. All right, so the first thing I want to say about iPad, uh, looking at uh, the mail app on your iPad, you'll see that on the left hand side, you have your inboxes and you have your folders. Now, this is iCloud.com, and I'm going to scroll up and show you everything. And before I that's start, let me say your this. inbox, your VIP, you are drafts, going to archive, see my so email. And my below email, that, you'll see very active folders. right now because These during the our presentation, that I'll I have need um, on George to send iPad. me a couple of emails. So well, you're sorry, going to see some things account. if you want to create a rule. And what does a rule do? A rule will direct where you want your email to go. So I'm going to go ahead and let's create a rule here. If you go on down to the lower left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a gear icon. If you click on the gear icon, you can then select rules. And here's the rules inbox. 
And right now I have no rules here, so I'm going to create a rule. And I am going to select add rule. So the criteria is, and I'm going to select if a message is, and these are the options you have. If it's from someone, if it's addressed to, CC'd, addressed to CC'd, or has a subject containing or has a list ID. I'm going to choose has subject containing. And in this subject, I'm going to type in May 27th. Then what can you do? I want to move the folder. Here are some of the options that I do have. Move the folder, move the trash, forward, and so forth. I'm going to leave it as move folder, and I'm going to select choose folder. Now, I don't want to send it to any of the folders that I have presently on iCloud.com. I'm actually going to create a new folder. And then this new folder, I want to name this new folder May 27 folder. Select done. And I'm going to select done again. So over on the right left hand side, you'll see a new May 27 folder. All right, so George, can you send me an email and I want the subject to say May 27? Let me know when you send it, please. So I'm going to click on the folder and I'm going to wait and see. Send. I, send. All right. So George sent his email. And let's go to inbox. Sent. There you are. So the rule was if a subject has May 27, put it in the May 27 folder. So that's basically how a rule works. You tell it. You set the criteria, you set the filter, and you create the destination for it. All right. So that's really pretty straightforward. So now I want to go to my mail app. And let's go to mail. All right. So in the mail app, you have things that are slightly a little different. You can give me one second. All right. Okay. So, give me a second, sorry. So, now I'm on the mail app on my computer and things are a little different here. You have on the left hand side, you have I some of the same items that this, you saw so on iCloud.com. Just hide. You have this. mailboxes at the top. I'm going to go over smart mailboxes later. All right, give me a you second. You have Let's on my Mac and down below ID. here, you'll see yeah. iCloud. And what I don't see right now is the folder that I created on iCloud, which should be showing up. So let me do this. Let me quit this and let me turn it back on because that folder should be showing up. Give me one second for it to load. All right, there it is. So here's the May 27th folder that I created on iCloud.com. Now, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the mail interface, but let me quickly go over a couple of things. At the top of the mailbox, you have your toolbar. This is your toolbar, and you can customize this toolbar. If you right click, you can select customize, and you have a bunch of icons that you can select and drag to the toolbar. So if I wanted to copy something, I could select that and drag it here. If I want to take any of these out, I just drag it back out. And I'm going to choose done. So here below the toolbar, <clears throat> excuse me, 
you have the favorites section. And this is where you can put any favorite mailbox. You can just drag it up inside here. All right. So going, <clears throat> excuse me, going back over to the left side, I have my mailboxes, my smart mailboxes on my Mac, and I have iCloud.com. Now, when you are working through your mail app, you actually have two places that you can put your mail. You can put your mail on your computer on, on my Mac, and you can also have it in your iCloud.com account. So why would you do that? For me, I do it for organization purposes. I don't want every single piece of mail that I have sitting on iCloud.com. And I find that it's easier for me to organize my emails and folders better if I'm using the mail app. But this is not an either or choice. You can have all of your emails on iCloud.com. You can have all of your emails on your Mac, or you can split them up the way that I do. So let's take a look here. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with iCloud.com. I'm going to create a folder, I'm going to create rules, and I'm going to set a destination. But I'm going to show you that you have more features when you're working through the mail app than you do on iCloud.com. But um, there are actually are some different things on both. So when you're working with mail, you have to do one thing differently that you uh, didn't have to do on iCloud.com. You have to create your destination folder first. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the inbox and I'm going to click on a George Rubin email. And the reason I'm clicking on this is because I want some of this information to come into the rule automatically. So I'm going to then go to mail, select preferences, and it's going to bring up the preference dialog. And let's select rules here. I'm going to start by clicking, just clicking on uh, a rule at the very top. If I click on a rule at the very top and then add a rule, this rule will then be created above the um, rule that I've selected. The reason I'm doing this is because I want this rule that I create to occur first. I want all of the um, ensuing emails to um, come after this one. So I'm going to name this one critical zoom info. Oops, you know what I did? I forgot to create the destination first. So if you don't create the destination first, once you start creating this rule, you're going to say, uh oh, I forgot to create the destination first because uh, Apple does not give you a way to create a new folder once you get this far into it. That is a hiccup that I wish that they would fix, but um, they haven't, or they haven't changed it. There are other email programs that will allow to, you to do this, but the mail app does not, excuse me. So let's back out of this. Select cancel. I'm gonna slide this over for a second. And I'm going to go right back to here. So let's do this. Let's go to mailbox. I want to create a new mailbox. When I select create a new mailbox, I get an option that I don't get on iCloud.com. The option is the location. I can create an email mailbox on iCloud.com or on my Mac. Here you see the folders that I've listed uh, that I've created on iCloud.com. And these are all of the folders and subfolders that I have on the Mac. So let's just say I want to create this on my Mac. I'm going to name this folder Critical Zoom Info. So I've told it to create this new mailbox on the location on my Mac. And when I choose OK, that folder appears right here. But that's not exactly where I wanted that folder to be. I want that folder to be in with my other George Rubin emails. So I'm going to take this folder 
click on it, and I'm going to right click. And I can also do this from the menus up at the top. And I'm going to select delete mailbox. It's going to ask me, do you want to do this? Knowing that it will permanently remove emails. Sure, not a problem. So that's gone. So you can create and delete email mailboxes pretty easily. So let's go back. I'm going to go back to mailbox, back to new mailbox. And this time, I am going to create this on my Mac, but I want to create this in a folder, and actually it's a subfolder that I already have titled George Rubin. I want to create this new mailbox in the George Rubin folder mailbox, and I want this named Critical Zoom Info. I'm going to choose OK, and here is my new mailbox, Critical Zoom Info. So let's leave that there. So George, can you send me, oh, hold on a second. George, can you send me an email and I want the subject to be titled Critical Zoom Info. So you do send that, it. actually, don't send, did you send it already? Done, done. Oh, okay, I'm gonna ask you to send me another one. Hold on for a second. So let me do this. Let me go back to the rules. So back to mail preferences and back to rules. So I'm gonna add a rule. This rule is going to read uh, description, give it a name, critical zoom info. It doesn't necessarily have to be from George, but because I know that all these emails that will have critical zoom info will be from George, I'm going to say from George and because I already have, I already have a rule from George, I'm going to add another criteria. The subject is going to read, contains critical Zoom information. It just picked that up from the title. And then, let's see, is there any other criteria I want? Then I want it to, nope, so I'm gonna take that off. Then I want it to move the message, to perform the following actions. I want it to move the message to, and here I'm going to select the George Rubin Critical Info mailbox. So it's going to take this and move it here. And then there's one other thing that I want to tell this rule to do. I want to tell this rule to stop evaluating rules. The reason I'm doing this is because I have other rules here that relate to George. So once it finds an email from George that has this particular subject, I want it to stop. And let's do this. So you see all of the different criteria that you have here that you did not have on iCloud.com. You can, the different headers, any recipient, message is addressed to my full name or the date sent, date received, account. You have a lot of different criteria that you can list as a filter that you don't see on iCloud.com. And even with subject, same thing. So I can tell it to move, copy, set a color. And actually I want to do that. Let's do this. I want to, it to move the message. I want it to set the color of the message to, let's give it a purple and then stop evaluating. So let's choose okay. Now, I already have about, uh, I think, 400 rules in Apple. So right now I'm going to tell it not to apply because there's another piece of this uh, process that I want to show you. So I'm gonna tell it not to apply. And let's just slide this over. And all right, so I'm going to go to my Critical Zoom info mailbox. George, can you send me that email. Let's see if it populates. Critical Zoom. Info, critical Zoom okay. info in the subject. So that's my inbox. 
And here is George. And let me know when you send it. Sent. Okay. So we're going to give it a couple of seconds. And so right now nothing shows up in the inbox. It's downloading one message. So it doesn't show up in my inbox. The app just told me that it's downloading one message. And let's see. There's George's message with the rules applied to it. So rules can allow you to sort your emails into different locations so you don't have a lot of emails cluttering up your inbox. So any questions about anything so far? Here do you have one hand up? I'm going to. Okay. Cynthia, does. Cynthia, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes. Hi. Hi. I, hi. I wanted to know how to do this for the Nmug emails, and I did it already because somebody showed me how, which I had forgotten how. But it only gets some of them. I must not have the right wording because some of the emails stay in my main box and some go to the end mug box that I have. Now, that, that can be a very good question because with some of those emails, have you read them before? Um, no, it collected it, mail I had read already. When I first okay. made it, it collected mail from a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. Okay. But sometimes so, it's not end mug, it's like Naples mug or something. Then so you know. have to then you have to put that criteria in the filter. It has, it has to be there in order for it to find it. And you can make sure that those rules are grouped together. So it, 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 it's, some, it's a, I'm sorry, say that again. It would be a different rule? No, it could be the same rule. When you, let's go back to preferences. When you create a rule, you see these, plus signs over on the right hand side, plus and minus, yes. mm -hmm. you can keep adding as many criteria as you like. So I could say from subject, and I can also say um, like contains, message content contains, or I, then I could also say the different subject could say um, another part, it could say Naples, it could say in mug, it could say the different phrases that come into that subject line. So just keep adding to the criteria. What okay. is the address? Oh, sorry for the thing. Uh, what if the address is like from Eckert or something? Then those don't always go in either, but sometimes they do. All right, so you have to find a criteria that works. You have to put in a criteria that works and do this plus or minus thing, adding the different criteria. But I'm going to go on to the next question. Uh, Thomas Hopkins, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Gina. Thank you for taking my question. I don't know if it's the right time to ask. Uh, I've got 13,000 emails that are all in the cloud. Uh, some of them are old business ones. And uh, every time I get a new phone, iPhone or iPad, of course, and then I click on mail, it wants to put a whole bunch on the iPhone or iPad. My question is, is that uh, can I just drag them out of the cloud onto my Mac and then they won't be in the cloud anymore? Or do I have to clean it off my iPhone or my iPad? Actually, that is a perfect question. All right, so I'm going to stop answering questions and demonstrate the answer, which was actually next. All right, so I have, let me go to the, my inbox. All right, so I'm in my inbox. I have a message here from, uh, from George, and it reads uh, in, mail critic, in mug critical. I have another one here that reads the same thing. Another one here for 520 and another one here, 518. They all say the same thing. These are existing emails. And I have uh, 650 different emails 
uh, in my inbox, but I want to take these. You don't have to physically drag them. If you were in a web program or even if you were on iCloud.com, you would have to physically drag and drop these. But when you're in the mail app, you don't. If you create a rule that tells these emails where to go to file themselves. So I'm going to select, and I don't even have to select just those. I'm going to select these one, two, three, four, five, and they have different emails associated, uh, different emails in here. So you'll see how uh, on the right hand side it groups the messages. What I'm going to do, I can go to the message menu and I can tell it to apply rules. And I've been holding off on this just for this demonstration. When you have existing emails, if you create a rule, you can select any existing emails and apply those rules and those emails will get sorted. So if I select apply rules now, did you see the shuffle on the right hand side? I'm assuming you said yes. So now if I go to critical zoom info, instead of that one email, I have the other four that I had selected. So I can go through everything that is existing. And if I've created a rule, I can select them, go to mailbox, go to, me go to messages, select apply rules, and the rules that I have will go through and look at all of those emails and apply those rules and sort them. So hopefully that helped. Um, Thomas, unmute yourself and give me a response to that, please. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a wonderful way to do it, but uh, I've uh, manually on iCloud got something like 50 folders because I did them all the sort manual there. Yes. And so uh, uh, I want to, for, just for argument's sake, I got a water heater 10 years ago and I've got some emails on it and I don't need to see them every day, but when, I, when it's time for a new water heater, I'm gonna to wanna to go find that email. So I'd like to preserve that folder that's on iCloud and uh, put it on my Mac, but I don't want it to be on my iPhone and iPad okay. every day. Hold that thought because I do have a solution to that later in the presentation. I'm gonna take a next question. Uh, Betty Larson, will you unmute yourself and ask your question? Thank you, Sheeta. Um, my, my question is, when your emails get sorted into those many um, mailboxes, yes. do you miss things then because you don't see them? They, they land there and if you don't look in that, in that folder? Or no. am I getting that wrong? No, uh, that's a good question. You're not getting it wrong, sort of. All right, so <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me answer you. If you look over on the left-hand side, you see all of these numbers, two, 150, one, 11, 44, so forth. These are all numbers indicating that I have unread emails here. So that keeps me from missing them. Okay, even though they've gone into a mailbox, you're going Correct. to see them because of that. Correct. Does that, does that refresh every day or? or um... It stays there until I read the email. Okay. Do you have to set anything up or does that, does that no. automatically happen? Okay. No, it automatically happens because it's on red. Okay. I see I have some work to do. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I, this is why, for example, uh, in some areas you may see two or in George's case, 71. Uh, I, I, these emails are there, but I haven't gone in and read them. What, what I do sometimes, I'll just read the way I have the email set up to show me the first couple of lines, and then I can glance over it when the email is in the inbox, but I don't have to go in and do anything to it right now because, okay, I know that I need to come back and come back and come back and look at this. So I don't read it. I just read the first couple of lines, and then I can go back and attend to it later. But that unread indicator is always there letting me know that I have to go back and attend to this. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, uh, Michael Slider, can you slide there? 
I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Yeah, uh, the question has to do with sorting all of the different uh, emails. And I'm confused about uh, using different accounts and also the, uh, in, in conjunction with the uh, uh, smart mailboxes. Can you explain that? I will explain smart mailboxes. I only use one account, one account iCloud.com. So this is the same account that you saw on my iCloud.com um, on the web page on my uh, iPad. It's all of my iCloud.com email comes in right here. So anything that's on iCloud.com, I see on all of my devices. Anything that is sitting right here in, on my Mac, I only see on my Mac. So I can take everything or some things from iCloud.com and take a look at them. Right now I have 646 emails sitting on iCloud.com, but I have thousands of emails in my inbox on my Mac. And here are some that I have not read. So it's one account, same account. Um, and I'm going to go over smart boxes in a second, but does that answer part of your question? Yeah, and Michael? Uh, it, it, it does, but did you answer it in, in terms of if you have multiple accounts, like a Gmail account? And I, I'm not going over multiple accounts. I'm only going over iCloud.com but I do know people who have multiple accounts and those accounts, multiple accounts would all show up up here. Yes. And you could basically do the exact same thing that I'm doing now. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. So uh, let me make sure that I covered. Okay. Linda Colvin, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Yes, I, I have a question about what happens if you've accidentally moved an email or even a folder into some other uh, mailbox where you didn't mean to put it. And sometimes when I search for that, it may say, you know, that it's in some folder, but I, I have to open all the folders on my Apple Mail to find where it might be. Um, that is one of the, what I consider a frustration of Mac mail. It is sometimes very hard to find something if you've accidentally put it somewhere else. So um, yes, I would say that sometimes you have to hunt and pack the way you were doing to see where it is and physically pull that folder out. Even though Mac has a search function up here, I don't really find it to be all that useful. So Can I'm I say sorry. So? Yeah, I'm, hold on. I'm sorry I couldn't give you a better answer for that. Go ahead, George. Uh, if she finds it right away, she can uh, just go to yes. uh, edit, undelete, or unmove. Un un undo, unmove. Oh yeah, undo, um, edit or undo. Okay, Roger Bader, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Hi. Yeah, I. To go back, Cheetah, to what you said about the uh, inbox, the mails coming to the inbox, and the number showing. Yes. Some of what you have said, I think maybe I, I need to do some investigating. But right now, I've had some trouble with my inboxes, and I've been to uh, the discussion group, and I've been to Apple, and I've been to Apple, and I've been to Apple again. And Apple Care has uh, pretty well eliminated smart mailboxes and, and everything else that I had. Uh, I had a lot of stuff that was going to spam from Enmo, from George and from Jeff and from Marty. And it was a mess. So I'm back to basically what my uh, laptop was when I bought it in 17. What, I, what I'm finding after my last um, uh, meeting with AppleCare, <clears throat> I wasn't sure that the representative was the, was the best I had talked to. So I'm, I'm leaving. It's not broken other what's than your, I'm going to leave it alone for right now. What, what's your that question? That number that you have of unread, I'm mm -hmm. showing 1,100 and 1,200. 
1300. Mm -hmm. And I have nothing in my inbox that is showing that is unread. It's, uh, for example, the, the one that George sent to you, it had a, yes. blue, a blue dot up in the left corner of it, which yes. is unread, exactly. Yes. But I have none of that. Now, is there something, some other areas that I need to go to to see what is showing as unread? 1100, that's just, that's. You've, and you scroll, exactly. and you, and you scroll down through that list and you see nothing? I went through, sometimes there'll be um, um, a thread that will go with that. And, and I've gone through every email and I make sure that I open every single uh, attachment that's in that email. There might be, there, there's been as many as five and six. Okay. And if you All right. click on them, they'll still show as unread. Okay, you okay. Know. Roger. Yeah. This, sound, this sounds like a, a, a troubleshooting technical issue because if you see if you see inbox and it has 1100 but if you go into the inbox and you don't see it even if you're scrolling up and down on the email that's okay. some type of technical issue going on with the mail okay. app itself okay. and that may take more than what i can answer right now okay that's fine that's fine okay I'll, I'll, all right i'll get back to them thank you okay all right scott silver can you unmute yourself and ask your question Yes, Shido. Uh, yes. On my computer, on my Mac, there are a number of folders underneath that, some of which are deleted messages, drafts, notes, but there yes. are about 11 or 12 that say recovered messages. What does that yes. uh, represent? Uh, that represents the mail um, recovering messages that I don't know if there was like some type of hiccup because um, I've seen it happen and actually it just it sort of populates itself sometimes you will see uh emails that create themselves <laughs> in your mail uh app recovered messages may be one import may be one and in my case spam uh created itself as well depending on what was going on with the mail system so uh, recovered messages i'm not going to click on this because i don't know what's in it right now and there's only so much i want to show you so uh, uh, it was somehow recovered, come back into the, your mail operating system or in the mail app. Okay, that's the that's the best answer I can give to you right now. Okay, I, can I just delete them? Uh, if you read them, look at them, see if they pertain to anything you're doing, and yes, delete them. Okay. Once you delete them out of these mailboxes, they should not come back. But um, make sure it's something that you want to delete. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Shira. yeah. you're welcome. You don't have to hold on to it. Okay. All right. So let me, I'm going to continue on. I thank you for your questions. All right. So I'm going to continue on. And here I have uh, in this mailbox, I have 71 messages from George Rubin. And uh, about two or three months ago, I asked George to do me a favor. And that favor, and he did, and I thank you, George. The favor was I asked him to start naming some of the emails in a certain way that he sent out as messages to us. And uh, he started naming the InMug critical info. We also have messages on our Wednesday meetings where he put Wednesday in the um, title and when we had classes, he started putting classes in the title as well, the word classes. So those were all from me. And thank you, George. The reason I asked him to do that, because I wanted to create um, folders and I wanted to create these rules to show you that, again, even with existing emails, you can uh, enact your rules so that they go into different folders. So, for example, right now I have 21 emails in the Wednesday meetings folder. And let's do this. I'm going to select this first email in the George Rubin folder. And I'm just going to select all. So I can do this by pressing Command A or select all. And then I'm going to tell it to apply rules. I can also just right click while I have all of these emails selected and choose apply rules. And it may take 
a second or two because I have 400 and something rules. And when I tell mail to apply rules, it's actually going to sift through all of those 420 rules that I have. And considering this might be a little more than I should have asked it to do right now, which I think it might have been. So I may have to just stop this for a second. Okay, there you go. So this one should not be here, apply rules, and it, ah, there you go. It goes to its destination. Here, there used to be 72, now there are only 39. So Wednesday meetings, I used to have, I still, it still says 21. So, 72, now it says 39. So I didn't seem to have more than I, I had less than I thought there. But you, what you saw is that it did sort the emails and put them into different folders. So now, the next thing I want to show you are smart mailboxes. A smart mailbox is a way for you to look at your inbox without moving the email. So for example, I have a smart inbox, several named today. I have one named attachments, one this week and this month. So today shows me all of the emails that I have today. Attachments goes through my entire emails and tells me that there are 44 emails that have attachments. Um, I want to see these because I want to either file these attachments or I want to uh, see what they are, see if I need to keep them and delete them. Uh, this week, sometimes I don't get to all of my emails today, imagine that. So I want to see all of the emails that I got for the last week, the last seven days. And if by chance I'm too busy and I miss that, then I want it to show me all of the emails that I got this month. So I can tell it, I can set different criteria. So I'm going to create a new smart mailbox. So from the menu, mailbox, new smart mailbox. So it brings up a new smart mailbox and I am going to name this text files and contains. I want it to match all of the following conditions. Let's see, do I want this to be from George? No, I don't need it to be from George. It may come up that it's from George, but I want any attachment. Uh, I want attachment type. I want the attachment type to be a text. And I want the date received to mm, within the last, da, 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 let's see, yesterday, last week, I want it to be in the last 14 days. And I could tell it to look in the trash. I try to empty the trash often. That's a, something to consider. I could also tell it to look in sent messages. And you also have thousands upon, if you're like me, you have thousands upon thousands of emails in your sent messages. I like to try to keep a record of it. I know there's a 12 step program for that. I'll work on it. But I want this rule to show me any attachment that is a text file, the date received within the last 14 days, and let's choose okay. So that smart mailbox now shows up here. It tells me that I have five of these files and it's showing me five of, actually it's showing me that I have five unread files, but these are all files that I've received in the last 14 days that have text messages attached to them. Gina, and here are, here are three from George. Yes. You made 14 years of days. I don't know if you saw that. I cannot, I, I could not hear you. Say that again, please. You had selected uh, years instead of days. Are oh, you? did I? Yeah. Oh, well, oh, great. I did that on purpose. All right. So 
I didn't do it on purpose, but with that mistake, if I double click on that text file, I can say days and change it that quickly. Thank you. I can change it just that quickly. So now these are the text files that I've um, received in the last 14 days. 14 years, wow. I do have emails in my mail app that are that old. So thank you. All right, so that's how you can create a smart mailbox. And hopefully that, um, Mr. Hopkins, that, that answered a question that you had. Any other questions? Scott, unmute yourself and ask your question. You just said that you have emails that are 14 years old. Is there a way to set up email trash so that they're deleted after a certain period of time? Yes, you can. I don't because I don't want, I personally don't want things automatically happening like that. I would prefer to delete an email and there may be a reason why I keep an email. Um, and I won't, like for example, um, there are some emails that are from dear friends who are no longer here and I want to archive their emails in a certain way. So yes, there's a reason why I hold on to some emails um, or I may want to go back, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, Michael, unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, um, it, it has to do with smart mailboxes and regular mailboxes. Uh, but um, if, you, if you go to the sort by date uh, t at the top of the uh, panel where it says sort by date, and, there's the yes. little, and the, to the right of that, there's the little aerial button that says um, new, on, new messages only. Do you see that? Uh, right where it says sort by date. At the top where you were, where it says sort by date, to the right of that column, it, there's, a little, there's a little button there. Do you see that? Where are you asking me to go? Where? Right up to where, to the left, to the middle column. And middle where column. So oh, here? Right there, right. Yes. Okay, now when I click on that, sometimes, you know, the missing emails that someone was talking about in their new ones, and then mm -hmm. to see how they interact with smart mailboxes and all the other ones you have. When you push that button, what is it doing? It's sorting by red and um, red and unread. Here's right. my unread and here's my red. So if you have ma emails like someone said they had fourteen hundred that they couldn't find, if you did that, would you find them again? The unread. It's, po it's possible, but I I don't want to answer that question. That's more technical support. I want to answer. I'm not of what I what I wanted to see how it applies to what you did. If you do the unread, what what happens? If I Right now, it's showing me all of the emails that I have in this smart uh, mailbox. If I select this button, it's showing me only the unread emails. Okay. That's what this button does. Is that an easier way to, to, to sort through it? Is it like a double sort? No, it's not a double sort. It's just showing you whether or not you're looking at an unread message versus a read message. Okay. okay? Yeah. Hey, I don't know. I'm sorry? Is that a better way to do it? To do what? To sort by the unread only? You, it is a choice for you to view it that way. Right. It may, it, better or not is, um, is a judgment for, for what you're doing. OK, um, John, please ask your question. Cheater, in the smart bail, mailbox, essentially, that's creating a duplicate mailbox. It won't take it from where it is, right? It's not taking a, creating a duplicate mailbox. It's basically creating a portal for you to see all of the messages that fall under that criteria. Thank you. Okay. And it does not move any of your emails. It just displays them to you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thanks. Uh, okay. You're welcome. Uh, Bill Neese, ask your question, please. Uh, <clears throat> Cheetah, thank you. You're welcome. If, if I uh, have inadvertently deleted an email and I'm looking for it, it came within the last two weeks, is mm -hmm. there any way to co recover that other than Time Machine? 
if you haven't deleted your trash, it's still sitting in your trash. In mail trash? Yes. Okay. It, thank it's, you. If, you, if you haven't deleted it from, if you delete an email, it goes here into the trash. If you don't delete the trash, that email is still sitting there. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Linda Colvin, unmute yourself. And I'm sorry, um, Cynthia, ask your question. You're first. You're next. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi. If you Hi. Uh, are in a regular mailbox, not a smart, smart mailbox, is there yes. a way to leave things to, to make a rule that something will stay in your in regular inbox and only move to the um, other inbox when it when you've read it? Uh, yes, you can create an email, a rule that says if an email is has been read, go here. If it hasn't been read, it will stay there. How do you, but how do, you do that? I don't see a way. There, okay, let's quickly go to preferences and go to rules. There should be a way to create something like that. Let's add a rule. If, okay, message, message, message. Uh, sender message content message. Okay, I don't see where, you, I don't actually don't see that, where that could be a criteria if message is unread. So no, I don't see that that can be set as a criteria. Um, okay. Okay, but there's got to be a way to do that. The only problem with that is if you accidentally click on that unread message and the, if you accidentally click on the unread message, the unread button will disappear and then that email may then jump to the other folder. That's so true. That's, it definitely yeah. does. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that way that can become a problem. But until you have a rule telling any email where to go, it stays in your inbox. So, you know, that may not be, you know, a necessity. It's question, maybe. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, Linda, you're next. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, is there some way to create an alias um, in another folder? I've got a specific example right now. I'm trying to pull together data for a uh, meeting next week um, from different mailboxes from lawyers and CPAs and all. Um, so is there some way to make an alias from those other mailboxes in a new mailbox pertaining to the meeting? You could possibly create a smart folder for that. So. Let me show you. Under smart mailboxes, you can also create what's called a smart mailbox folder. So here, if I create a smart, okay, let me back up. If you create a smart mailbox and create the criteria for, let's say, one of those options, then create another smart mailbox for another option and keep going, you can then create a smart mailbox folder let's say just for example, for clients. And then I could take those smart mailboxes and drag them, let's do it, and drag them into this folder so that it will then show me all of the mailbox, <laughs> smart mailboxes, say that 10 times, that have that criteria. So do you see how that could be helpful? Linda? Well, see, I, I kind of had thought that if I had a smart mailbox, then it would move the mail from the mailbox where it is into the smart mailbox. And I didn't want to move it. I just wanted to reference it like with an alias. A smart mailbox does not move a single email. Oh. It, it only displays the email. Oh. It's like looking through a window, and I told the window to only show me certain criteria. Oh, okay. So yeah, that mail, tried. <laughs> yeah, that mail, that mail never moves. Give it a try and, you know, send me an email if you have uh, any issues or questions with it. But a smart mailbox is just a portal or window for you to see the email that fits this criteria. So you, if you have several smart mailboxes with different criteria, you can then put all of that in a folder 
And once you click on that folder, it shows you all of the smart mailboxes with that criteria. So okay. try that, try that and see if that can work for you. Yeah, that's one reason I stopped what I was doing because I never did a smart mailbox and I had a lot of questions. Thank you. Give it, you're welcome. Give it a try. All right, James Cutler, unmute yourself, ask your question. Actually, it's a comment about the gotcha button. What's the gotcha uh, button? Make well, if you, if you look at your mail screen there where it says uh, P. Becker, uh, and right above the word yesterday is that antenna looking button. The that's red, the unread, gotcha. yeah. That's the gotcha button. Um, I learned about that. I use classic mode, so I don't see all that other garbage on the screen. And somehow that button had been clicked. So yeah, all, the, all the messages I read, I couldn't find anymore looking in my classic <laughs> view of mailboxes. That's why it's a gotcha button. But okay. that's absolutely independent of rules, smart mailboxes, or anything else. It only applies to the display that you're looking at. And it, it, it's an, an additional mask or filter in front of your eyes. Correct. As you demonstrated when you clicked on it, and two of the messages disappeared, then you click again, and the message came back. Correct. So, it's only it's only showing red on red. Button. Yeah. All right. But it, it's absolutely independent of all the other wonderful things that you've just been describing. Thank you, Jen. All right, Mitch, unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, I have a uh, a couple. I noticed when I was look, I don't use the mail app on the on the iPad that much, or, right. or on the uh, computer that much. I use it on the iPad. Um, if I create a smart mailbox on the um, Mac, will it show on my iPad? No. Okay, uh, then the other thing I noticed is that I did have, not a large number, but uh, a few hundred emails on my Mac that were like from 2009, and I have been to the 12-step program, so I went <laughs> right away. Uh, but how, I don't even know how they got there, and I want to make sure that they never get on my Mac. I'm, I'm using iCloud, so would I have to do something? I would actually act actually have to go down and click on on my, ac on my Mac and save it there. Is that right? If, there, if these emails that you're talking are right now, talking about, are right now in your iCloud folder, Yes, you, you can you can set up rules that will pull them from iCloud to your mailboxes on your Mac. You don't have to physically do it one by one. I don't and want them on my Mac. Fact is, I'd like to delete on my Mac if I could completely, but I know you that. cannot delete on my Mac. What do you want these emails to be? Well, I want them to be in the cloud. I get rid of the ones that were oh. there were only a couple hundred on my Mac, and they were dated from. 2009 and I just I went through and deleted them all. Okay, so what's your question? I just wanted to know how if I wanted to put something there you told I would have to intentionally save it on my Mac. Correct. Yes. And then and then I just had one other side question when you keep on moving your cursor around and all of a sudden it shows a white circle. How are you doing that? I'm using an app titled mouse pose. Mouse what? Mouse pose. Mouse. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, James Corsica, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Tia. Uh, Hi. I, I want to give you an analogy and ask me and, and, and tell me whether it's correct or not. Sure. Mailboxes are to the mail app as playlists are to the music app. That is, the music is not really in the playlist. That what's in the playlist is. Uh, the music playlist is is a kind of a code that references the music in a you know where 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 the music would be in a larger location. That would be the analogy for a smart mailbox. Yes. Smart mailbox, not a not a uh, uh, a regular mailbox. Correct. So a regular mailbox has the actual email. In it. Correct. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So now let's move on thank you all for your questions and your comments appreciate it so let's select this 
think I was here. All right, so I've taken you through iPad. I've gone over rule options in your mail app for iCloud.com and on my Mac. I've gone through smart mailboxes and um, mailbox, smart mailbox folders. So what are some of the other options that you have to reduce the amount of emails that are driving you crazy? You can delete them, of course. You can also block a sender if you get um, uh, emails from someone who you know and you don't want to receive any more emails from them. This isn't the same as spam. Spam is uh, something different. I'll show you in a second. Uh, you can also unsubscribe. Uh, I have so set the unsubscribe button for about 90% of the emails that I used to subscribe to, for example, travel agencies, uh, departments, uh, retail stores, and so forth, because at a certain point, it just became more of a nuisance and frustration to see these emails uh, come in every day. Uh, some who would send two or three a day and it just became exasperating. You can also, ex for those um, emails that you might want to save or mailbox that you might want to save, you can export that mailbox. I wanna show you that. And another method of saving it is uh, saving an email or even a group of emails is that you can export the emails or print the emails to PDF. So let's take a look at that. First thing I want to show you is exporting the entire email box out. So I'm going to select my favorite email box here. Uh, let's select something with a little a fewer mail, fewer mails in it. All right, so actually let me show you how to do PDF first. So I have these emails and let's just assume I want to keep some semblance of these emails, but I don't want them in my um, mail program. I can select and save these several different ways. So I'm going to select all of these. I can go to the file menu and I can select export as PDF. If I select export as PDF, what the app will do is ask me, okay, where do you want to put these? I'm going to create a new folder, uh, untitled folder, uh, let's just say NMHUG. And I'm going to save this on my desktop for visual purposes, and then I select choose. What the mail app will do is export all of these emails out as separate PDFs. And it should take just a few more seconds to get this and maybe I can show you the mailbox while it's doing that. So if I double click here, so these are the PDFs that it's creating from the emails and they hold all of the information. I can click through all of the pages. So this is one way to save, whoops, save those emails. I can also do this. Now that exports them out as separate emails. So it still wants to do this. I'm gonna cancel this because I don't wanna see this anymore. I can also tell it to print these emails. And what it will do, it will then combine all of these emails into one PDF. And if you look, you'll see here, it says one of 82 pages. So instead of having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine separate PDFs, it combined those nine separate PDFs into one PDF. And what I'm going to do then is go to the PDF menu here and select save as PDF. So I sort of, sort of doing it twice. And I'm going to save this to my desktop and choose save. And it's preparing, letting me know the amount of pages that it's going to create. 
and boom, it's done. So if I go back to my desktop, here's that PDF and that's so here is that those nine PDFs combined into one. And all of these links here, and actually I could open this, but all of the links that you may see in the PDF, they are still active links. So creating a PDF of an email will bring all of the links intact. Something else that I could do, selecting, let's click on it, selecting the mailbox itself. I could right click and I can also do that from here. I could export the mailbox. So exporting the mailbox will take that mailbox and keep it in what I want to call mailbox form and allow you to just take all of the emails out. So let me show you what I mean. So I've told it to export that mailbox. I'm going to export it to the desktop. Let's choose, select choose. And let's hide this. Whoops. Undo, accidentally selected delete. I want it to select that. So here is the inbox that I just created here. If I open it up, it goes through the different folders and subfolders and it ends up with this. This is actually the inbox that houses all of those emails, those nine emails. This is what it looks like. So by exporting it out, I can then save it on my desktop somewhere. And when I want to look at all of these emails again, I then just import it back into the mail app. So that's another way to save your emails, PDF and exporting the mailbox out. All right, so let's go back. So there are a lot of different ways for you to unclutter your mailbox. And let me show you one thing, how you can block someone. So let's say I wanted to block George. He just sent so many emails. If I wanted to block George, if I come over to and eat, not really George, sorry. If I wanted to do that, I would come over to George's name and if I right click on any email address, you're given an option. You can block that contact. So what will happen is that the emails will still come in, but you won't get a notification from this person or that company. If I go to preferences, if I go to junk mail, it shows me right here all of the blocked emails or text messages. These are blocked text messages from spam text messages that come to my iPhone and they evidently had email addresses attached to them. So this is a list of every one that I've blocked in the last couple of years. I'm not gonna go down this list. Some of these people I know, some of these people I don't. So you can see these, these are just spam. And when it comes to junk mail, you can also select junk mail behaviors and set mail how to look for different junk mail and how to filter it. The reason I don't have anything selected here is because I don't use mail's junk mail filtering um, automatic system. I actually use another um, spam filtering system app by the name of spam sieve i've actually used this for all of email all of the email programs that i've had for the last 17 years it's called spam sieve it's by uh developer michael sai michael t-s-a-i and it is an absolutely excellent spam filtering program i've used it for 17 years and it is probably the best i've ever come across so, so those are the different ways that you can tame your email inbox, that you can create filters, that you can reduce the flow and clutter of email that you have, 
and hopefully just tame it. So with that, I want to thank you for joining me. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, uh, I was always under the impression, you, you know, the emails that at the bottom say on, on an, uh, subscribe here. Yes. That, that that wasn't a good idea because then they knew that you were there trying to unsubscribe so they'll keep sending them because you're there well that's fine and that that can be for spam but when you have um, emails coming in from department stores Nordstrom's Macy's or something they do have an unsubscribe button at the bottom of there and you know sales happen 24 7 every day i don't need to know every single sale that comes in so those are the type of unsubscribe buttons okay. that i'm talking about yeah it's those other wacky ones that i'm yes. always vicious of. yes and yes so i i uh, well <laughs> you and, <laughs> and you them. and you are correct just to delete them right. okay thank you all right okay, okay can you hear me? i can hear you, you fine now yeah. If George had missed in the subject when you asked him to send you uh, uh, an email and he mistyped one character or maybe two characters in the subject, uh, would, the, uh, would the program be smart enough to ask you, did you mean and put uh, the mailbox that it was with that name? Would it recognize that you almost typed the right subject? Uh, most of the time, no, but because I had him type in three words, critical zoom info, if he had mistyped info, it would have recognized the other two. And still that rule would have pulled in that email. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Alan. Hi. Um, question is, could you tell me the name of the spam filter that you've used for 17 years, or program, I guess. Okay, can you see the chat box? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to type in the name of the app in my, in this uh, chat box, and you can find it there. It's Spam Sieve by Michael Sai. Excellent program. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you do the same for the uh, pointer? Uh, I can do that, yes. Please, mouse, thank you. Mouse, be, mouse pose. That would be option E. -E. There you go. All right, that's for the pointer. All right, James Corsica, last question. Can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, Cheetah, as far as I'm concerned, you saved the best to last if I understand it correctly. Are you saying that if I right click on the sender in an email, and mark block that's like sending it to a junk file that i oh. never see possibly yes it will possibly send it to it what it might do it might send it to junk mail it might just leave it in your inbox but never let you see ne never like um read unread it'll just bring it in and leave it uh, and actually let me let me let me back up a second and say this, if blocked, you also have the option for people that you block, you can tell it to move that mail immediately to the trash. Oh. So there might be people I get emails from that I never see because I tell it to move that email uh, message immediately to the trash. Oh man, this was worth the price of admission, Cheetah. <laughs> I'm glad you got something out of it. Thank you so much, James. Thanks. All right, uh, Mitch, you are, I'll take you, Mitch. Last question. Yes, on that spam program, if, if I do that on the Mac, then uh, does that go in the right folders and everything on my uh, uh, iPad? No. This is, spam C will work for the mail app, not for iCloud.com. I'm sorry, I should have said that just in case that may, made a difference. But I where, use that on my... It? Where is it putting the spam then? It, you can tell it where to put it, to either put it in the spam folder that is on your Mac program, and then you can tell it to delete the spam folder, so, or delete the emails in the spam folder. So with your rules, you can always 
mo always tell it to delete the emails. Sometimes you don't even have to see them. But isn't that spam folder the same spam folder on my, uh, on my, isn't it in iCloud? And does, wouldn't that it's just not, show on the, it, no, they will be two different folders. You will have a, you can have a spam filter on a spam folder on your mail app and a spam folder in iCloud.com. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, uh, time is up. I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you got something out of this. Yeah, she it was good. I'm not going to use a lot of it, but it was still very interesting. That's yeah. all right. You can you can use it though. No. Whatever you need, take what you need and leave the rest. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still unmuted. I didn't know that. That's all right. <laughs> George, 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 would you like to make the closing remarks, please? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, Sheila. I just want to thank you again. Uh, it was an outstanding presentation. Uh, Sheila will be back with us a couple more times. Uh, in October and I think September. And um, I want to thank everyone from wherever you are for attending the meeting and stay well. Thank you. Thank you, George. Great job, Sheeta. Thank and you, Scott. We'd like you, we'd like you to thank check you. yourselves out, please. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Thanks, thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. And I just thank want thank you for having the Australians with you. <laughs> You're quite well, welcome. Thank for, you for joining us. Thanks for staying up so late or getting no, up early. It's way past my bedtime. <laughs>